Having determined these principles, let us explain the cause of the appearance in the sky of burning flames and of shooting stars, and of torches and goats, as some people call them. All these phenomena are one and the same, and are due to the same cause, the difference between them being one of degree. The explanation of these and many other phenomena is this. When the sun warms the earth, the evaporation which takes place is necessarily of two kinds, not of one only as some think. One kind is rather of the nature of vapor, the other of the nature of a windy exhalation. That which rises from the moisture contained in the earth and on its surface is vapor, while that rising from the earth itself, which is dry, is like smoke. Of these, the windy exhalation, being warm, rises above the moisture vapor, which is heavy and sinks below the other. Hence the world surrounding the earth is ordered as follows. First, below the circular motion comes the warm and dry element, which we call fire, for there is no word fully adequate to every state of the fumid evaporation. But we must use this terminology, since this element is the most inflammable of all bodies. Below this comes air. We must think of what we just called fire as being spread round the terrestrial sphere on the outside like a kind of fuel, so that a little motion often makes it burst into flame just as smoke does. For flame is the ebullition of a dry exhalation. So whenever the circular motion stirs this stuff up in any way, it catches fire at the point at which it is most inflammable. The result differs according to the disposition and quantity of the combustible material. If this is broad and long, we often see a flame burning as in a field of stubble. If it burns lengthwise only, we see what are called torches and goats and shooting stars. Now when the inflammable material is longer than it is broad, sometimes it seems to throw off sparks as it burns. This happens because matter catches fire at the sides in small portions, but continuously with the main body. Then it is called a goat. When this does not happen, it is a torch. But if the whole length of the exhalation is scattered in small parts and in many directions and in breadth and depth alike, we get what are called shooting stars. The cause of these shooting stars is sometimes the motion which ignites the exhalation. At other times, the air is condensed by cold and squeezes out and ejects the hot element, making their motion look more like that of a thing thrown than like a running fire. For the question might be raised whether the shooting of a star is the same thing as when you put an exhalation below a lamp and it lights the lower lamp from the flame above. For here too the flame passes wonderfully quickly and looks like a thing thrown, and not as if one thing after another caught fire. Or is a star, when it shoots, a single body that is thrown? Apparently both cases occur. Sometimes it is like the flame from the lamp, and sometimes bodies are projected by being squeezed out, like fruit stones from one's fingers, and so are seen to fall into the sea and on the dry land, both by night and by day when the sky is clear. They are thrown downwards because the condensation which propels them inclines downwards. Thunderbolts fall downwards for the same reason. Their origin is never combustion, but ejection under pressure, since naturally all heat tends upwards. When the phenomenon is formed in the upper region, it is due to the combustion of the exhalation. When it takes place at a lower level, it is due to the ejection of the exhalation by the condensing and cooling of the moisture evaporation. For this latter, as it condenses and inclines downward, contracts and thrusts out the hot element and causes it to be thrown downwards. The motion is upwards or downwards or sideways according to the way in which the evaporation lies and its disposition in respect of breadth and depth. In most cases the direction is sideways because two motions are involved, a compulsory motion downwards and a natural motion upwards, and under these circumstances an object always moves obliquely. Hence, the motion of shooting stars is generally oblique. So, the material cause of all these phenomena is the exhalation, the efficient cause sometimes the upper motion, sometimes the contraction and condensation of the air. Further, all these things happen below the moon. This is shown by their apparent speed, which is equal to that of things thrown by us. For it is because they are close to us that these latter seem far to exceed in speed the stars, the sun, and the moon.